guys, welcome back to another how-to video. It's really cold here in Idaho, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make some carbon fiber heated insoles. Let's jump into it. So everything that you see here is what you will need to build these carbon fiber insoles. Obviously you're going to need some sort of insoles. To begin with, I got these off of an old pair of shoes that actually came with a pair of shoes that I bought. But I would recommend getting some that are completely flat if possible. It will just make it a lot easier to do the job. And of course you're going to need some car carbon fiber heating tape. Now this is a special kind. It's actually flexible. It's kind of like a cloth, as you can see. There's one company that kind of has a monopoly on this, and I'll put a, a link to the description. They make good stuff, and you'll want to choose which size. I'll, I'll go ahead and link the exact stuff that I got here for this project down there. And then you're going to be needing some sort of a fabric to go on top of your insoles. I don't have that shown here, but I have some extra fabric I'll be using. Then you're going to need some sort of fabric adhesive. You could even use regular adhesive, like this is just some super glue. Um, but I recommend fabric adhesive or hemming web, which is a tape-like substance that you can iron on to glue da things down. Then you're also going to need some scrap wire right here you can see this is I believe this is number 18 gauge um, and this is fine stranded copper wire I don't know how well you can see that in there but I would definitely recommend a fine finer gauge it's going to be a lot more flexible and just more comfortable you're going to need some batteries um, these this is um zippy brand so these are for hobby RC cars I got them from Hobby King obviously you're going to need two of them I'll put a link in the description to the specific battery I used as well. <clears throat> You're going to need some sort of connector. These are um, they're called XT60 connectors, as you can see there. They're really nice because they are just a really strong, secure hold. Um, they can be a little too tight, but I'll show you how to make them a little bit more loose as well so that they slide. These ones I haven't really modified. As you can see, it's really hard to pull them apart. But if you... Um, crimp down those little connectors in there they slide a lot easier and you're gonna need some sort of a switch I really like this switch because you can turn it on and off and it has a little indicator so that you don't accidentally leave on your heated insoles and drain all your battery and then you're going to need some wire strippers to strip your wire um, it's really helpful to have a multimeter when calculating the length that you're gonna want for your heating tape because you can measure the resistance and that will help you to know how many watts are going to be running through and how hot quickly your shoes will heat up. You're going to want a soldering iron. This is about as basic a soldering iron as they come. But you're going to need some way in order to solder your wires together. Then you're going to need some solder as well, obviously. And then I would def definitely recommend if you can borrow a sewing kit or you can get one inexpensively because that will be how we will be attaching the wire to the, the fiber heating tape. And then this is actually basically liquid heat shrink tubing. Um, it's, it's basically wire insulator if I can get it open. It's really nice stuff. Um, but this way I don't have to use heat shrink tubing. I can just tape this on, or excuse me, paint this on to the wires where it's exposed and bare and it will seal it up and that way we won't have any issue with things sparking if they touch. So that, that's everything you're going to be needing. We'll go ahead and jump into the specifics of how we're going to build this now. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is take a look at our XT60 connector and we can see how there's a negative on that side and a positive on that side. Because our switch requires power in order to be able to light up the LED on the actual switch, I went ahead and soldered on a ground or negative wire that's going to attach directly to the same position that the battery will and then it will pull power from the positive. So these two terminals here you can see how this one is gold and these two are silver. The two silver are what we're going to be switching. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and solder both of those to the negative and the positive on this XT60. Okay, so you can see I've soldered those on, and then I'm going to be hooking up our 
positive terminal on the battery to the positive, the other side on the switch right there. And then I'm going to be hooking our negative to the negative side right here like that. We want to be really careful we don't let these two terminals touch. We could short out our battery and have some big issues. So you can see that we've got that all soldered up now. And what will happen now is when we turn the switch on, we'll have power that flows to it, the switch itself, but also power will flow to this connector. So we've got that wired up so that when this is, this is off, there will be no power in this disconnector. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint on our liquid insulator for this so that we can have um, no issues with shorting out or things sparking. And that is all the soldering that you will need to do for this project. The only other connection you'll need to make will be with the sewing kit. In order to know how long of carbon fiber heating tape we need, we will need to calculate our resistance as well as know the source voltage. Because we're using lithium polymer batteries where there are two cells, we're going to have an output of around 7.4 volts. And as we can check here, the resistance is around 17 ohms. If we do the calculations, we would do 7.4 divided by 17. We would get around half of a amp flowing through our carbon fiber heating tape, which is about what we want. We can also measure the carbon fiber heating tape. And if we do that, we can see that what we're aiming for here is somewhere around two to two and a half feet. The shorter the tape, the more hot it will get and the quickly your batteries will run out. The longer the tape, the longer your batteries will last and the less warm it will get. We can now go ahead and glue on our carbon fiber heated tape. And I'm not going to do that in this video because I already have a pair of heated insoles that I'm going to be using, so I don't need to make another one. But basically, you'll just glue it down um, or use the thread inseam sealer. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be attaching our female connector. This is going to connect to our battery. And we will strip the wires down. I like to, to give them plenty of length here. And I'm going to be attaching this to here with my thread, sewing that on there, and what that's going to do is establish an electrical connection and attach the wires down, and then I'll be putting a little bit of glue over the top as well. So I'll go ahead and do that now. You want to make sure that you do several loops at the end here to really hold the wire in so that you don't have any issues with it sliding out. And we'll also be adding some glue, as I said earlier, that will really secure everything down. Okay, as you can see, we've gone ahead and sewn that down. Now what we'll do is we'd go ahead and do the other side if I was going to make another one of these. Um, but I'll go ahead and just put this on here. And after that, what I would, what we'll do next is we'll put some cloth over across the whole thing. And I really liked the patches that you can get for denim jeans, is what I used. Um, they really bond down tightly when you heat them with an iron and they really just adhere and work well for this project. So that's what I'm going to be using. And then from there, all we have to do is hook up our battery to the back of our shoe, and we're good to go. completed shoes, you can easily plug them and unplug them here. And once you plug them in, all you have to do is turn this on. You can see the little light comes on, and then you can feel that the sole will start heating up. It does take a minute to heat up. And I originally used some Velcro, as you can see in there, but then it wasn't really holding, so I just used some duct tape until I could think of a, a better method. But duct tape seems to really be holding well. 
they're not falling off at all and they they're lasting with water and all sorts of different things I just built a little case for the battery and tucked all the electronics in there to charge these I'm using an IMAX B6 is what it's called it's a very simple charger basically it just takes 12 volt source in here and then it's able to output a lot of different battery types so I wired up this connector so that you can unplug your shoes from the, um, the heating coils and then just plug them into the charger set it to the right setting and then you're good to go it only takes about half hour 20 minutes to half an hour to charge these um, if you're running about two and a half amps through them so I hope you really enjoyed this video and I hope you get the chance to make some of these yourself catch you on the next one